Section 10 of The American Diary of a Japanese Girl. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Lynette Calkins. The American Diary of a Japanese Girl by Yoni Noguchi. In America, Part 8. Eighth my precious ada again how could i live without her we hastened to a circus if i were a boy i could earn a heap of money selling peanuts lemonade how those clowns did tumble if i could share in such fun the ringmaster was the handsomest man in the world in shiny boots and heavenly hat how splendidly his whip cracked the clack dashed like a burst of bamboo. Wouldn't you be glad to be the lady on horseback? I would truly glance at her daring grace. I whispered to Miss Ada. Even the seal performed. We laughed till tears dropped. The circus had twenty elephants. Think, our imperial menagerie of Tokyo has only one. How poor! Ninth last night i went over to mrs consoles to be given a lesson in card-playing cribbage would be the thing why because the lambs took much pleasure in it she said how is poker i suggested gambling game she protested i delight in gambling mrs console i proclaimed i had a wicked dream what do you imagine i ran away with a circus rider Tenth, I made the acquaintance of a Japanese woman. She must have been passing her thirty springs. I could be accurate in my scale, being one of her sisterhood. A cigar stand keeper in Dupont Street. Her name is O Fuji san. Mrs. Wistaria brought a box of cigarettes that my uncle had ordered. The morning is unoccupied in such a retail shop. Nobody puffs much before lunch. She set herself in a tete-a-tete. -tete. The chastity of a wife may be measured by her solo on her husband. Woman's greatest joy often lies in lamenting the faults of her teishu. Mrs. Wistaria spoke of her husband's being ill. I was to accept any chance for squandering my feelings. I sympathized, repeating, Kumaro nei, how sad! She said that she was going to leave the city for a week for the spring of San Jose to take care of her infirm dear. I fear I may lose my customers, she flagged. Her husband was afflicted with rheumatism. I promised to call at her store. Japs never visit an invalid without a present. Champagne? It's too ostentatious a drink. It's like a highly rouged woman." the loving-eyed claret should be chosen i sent a half-dozen bottles to mrs wisteria's a charity woman should be dressed in black and white i went to dupont street however in my grey dress her husband struggled to entertain me his clumsy smile appeared all the time at the wrong cue poor mr what's-his-name their business was an absurdly small affair the whole stock hardly valued above one hundred dollars. I thought I could conduct it rightly. I was carried away by a sudden fancy. Can't you leave your store in my hands while you are away? Say yes. No? I pressed myself upon them eagerly. They were amazed. High-born lady like you? Oh, no. Doshite? Doshite? Think. Do you know this is the toughest part of the town? Mrs. Wistaria tried to make me retreat. I couldn't listen to her, my whole soul being absorbed in my new caprice. I thought it remarkably romantic. I left the store to bring Uncle to talk the matter over. Mrs. Wistaria's store was neighbored by every saloon. The fuddling sounds overflowed in song. Hello, my baby, hello, my honey. Eleventh now he is my beloved uncle he assured me of his help in carrying out my freak you are fitting me for a slightly better role i fancy 
he said, venturing to add even one or two of his good-natured giggles. The secretaryship of a cigar stand is a rather more hopeful occupation than carrying your wraps through the street. Everything was arranged. Mrs. Wistaria and her husband set off for San Jose. I am a merchant lady. The first thing I did was to put up a dignified sign with the following black letters. Morning Glory Cigar Store I borrowed a picture from Mrs. Willis's parlor and placed it by the slot machine. It is the picture of a dear engine sitting against a woodland fire with a respectable pipe, whose smoke sails up to the yellow moon. What resignation! What dream! What joy! It did suit beautifully for the cigar stand. I love to see a man smoking. The elfish smoke acts like a merry-hearted May gossamer. When I observe a man's eye pursuing his smoke, I say to myself that his soul must be stepping nearer to his ideal. The road of smoke is the road of poesy. A noble trade is tobacco. Man's hermitage is situated only in smoking, I should say. I divested my uncle of his coat. I begged him to hold a bucket and a piece of cloth for a moment. Are you ready to wash the windows, uncle? I said. Traitor, morning glory. He flashed his accusing glare. Docile old man. He cleaned four windows of the kitchen, which was also the dining room and the parlor. I paid him five cents for each. I said, It's good fun to hire the chief secretary of the Nippon Mining Company to rub windows, isn't it? <laughs> and I laughed. Then I forced him to buy a cigar. You made some twenty cents out of me. Your turn is coming, my uncle, I said. I sold him a box of Lillian Russell cigars for three dollars. The real price was two. Ha, ha, ha. Twelfth. I invited my precious Ada to my store to dine a la japonaise. One Jap restaurant catered to it. Ira shai mashi. Condescend to enter. I showered my wooden-clogged greeting over Ada. From the Klondike, my neighboring saloon, a nigger song was flapping in. If you ain't got no money, why well, you needn't come around. Happy Ada-san. She was about to join in it when I brought her into my great dining room. Beg pardon, it was a paltry kitchen. Everything was seen on the table. Japanese dinner has no strict order of courses. You are a frolicsome butterfly among the dishes set like flowers before you. You may flit straight to any one which catches your whim. Take your honorable chopsticks, I said. Poor Miss Ada! How shall I manage with one stick? She raised her eyelids in questioning meekness. I bade her to split the stick in two. It was a brand new wooden one. I showed her how to finger it. She nibbled a bit from each dish. Every time she tasted, she looked upon me with a suspicious smile. And how she slipped her sticks at the critical moment! The sight amused me hugely. How dare I swallow raw fishes? she said, shrinking. What delight I taste in them! I slammed back at her timidity. Then I dipped a few cuts of the fishes into a porcelain soy pan for my mouth. I even trampled into her fish dish by and by. She was literally terrified. The feast was over. I said, Go yukuri, honorable not to be in a hurry. I slid away. I tied my white apron like a shop girl. I was glad that I did not forget to push a lead pencil through my hair. I presented myself to Ada, carrying a cigarette box. Will you buy tobacco for your lord? I spread the box before her. How much for one packet? she asked with the charming arrogance of a customer. She was acting also. Today is the memorial day of Lord Nonosama. My sweet Okosan, allow me to make a reduction. Then we laughed. Thirteenth. I created much noise in the Jap colony. Why not? Many brown men pause by my store and buy, simply because they can address a word or two to me. They are silly, aren't they? I announce that I am tired of their faces. 
i have never met one progressive seeming oriental since i landed they are like a dry tree are their souls dying well that's why they have no girl my uncle concluded he is so bright once in a while why not make love with american musume i said i would petition the tokyo government to transplant her women it may ruin the japanese girl's name was my afterthought if they ship only the homely gang lovely girl has no longing to sail over the ocean she has plenty of chance to grow a flower bride at home i pity my native boys of this city jap jap they are dashed with such exclamations from every corner as for me the sound of jap is my taste so i spray it in my writing i took up again my knitting work which i had commenced on the seas nothing could be more decent to fill up my leisure in the store my little neck fell as i was intent on my stocking some one spoke above my head how is business so so i replied in business-like reserve i lifted my face oh yeah he was mr consul will you sell me a cigar things are becoming awfully high mine is a distinctly dear store do you know it mr consul i am prepared to buy more at the beautiful girls he began to titter general arthur's cigar has leaped one dollar higher since monday and you don't mean it he mimicked a sudden alarm fourteenth oh funny drunkard to-day one fellow established himself before my store he fixed his amazing eyes on my face and extended his hairy hand hello japanese he stuttered he wanted to shake hands with me i lengthened my arm and slapped his face i withdrew directly within and watched him from a hole ha <laughs> ha she got mad ha <laughs> ha he was in a tip-top state of mind let me help myself he pilfered one cigar from the shelf he struck a match he bit the cigar good he muttered he tossed himself away with ludicrous dignity singing pon pili yon pon pon this is undeniably a tough place i exclaimed end of section ten